Hi, welcome. In this lecture, we'll be dealing with the glandular system in insects. Insects possess number of glands in their body, and each of these glands performs specific functions. And these functions are very much important for performing normal metabolic activities as well as for growth and development. One such gland which we have already studied is a salivary glands, which possess ducts. So that means these are exocrine glands. So in, in fact, insects possess both exocrine glands as well as endocrine glands. Exocrine glands are those glands which possess reservoirs. That means these secretions are poured into a container called reservoirs, and from the reservoir they are you know, released to the exterior of the body through the ducts. Okay, so those organs are those glands which are provided with a duct are called exocrine glands, and they possess reservoirs. Whereas endocrine glands are those glands which do not possess ducts and also they do not possess reservoirs. So as a result of that, the secretions will be directly mixed with the blood and transported to different parts of the body. So another very important you know, the difference is that usually the exocrine glands function independently without the coordination of another gland. So that means there is a, no need of any stimulus from another organ, another gland in order to release that particular specific substance. Whereas the endocrine glands usually function in coordination with the other systems. So that means whenever they get a stimulus, okay, now from the other glands or other organs, they start secreting and their secretions will be mixed with the blood. So and reaches to the, the affected organs. So that is the difference between the exocrine glands and endocrine glands. But the presence or absence of these glands and also its functions varies from species to species. So that means a gland may be there in two different species. Okay, but the function it performs may vary depending on the insect's requirement. Let us look at the various type of exocrine glands present in insects. So one such gland is mandibular gland found in case of mean anemones, where in which you know, releases secretes mean substance. So usually these mandibular glands are associated with the mandible, wherein in case of honeybees, you know, that is secreted by queen honeybees, which inhibits the gonad development in worker bees. So that means the queen substance will be fed to the young you know, broods and those you know, broods which will be you know, provided with you know, queen substances will become you know, sterile females. Okay, so we know that queen is a fertile female whereas the worker is a sterile female. So that is actually because of these queen substances you know, released by the queen anemone. The second type of gland is, is salivary glands. So usually these salivary glands are modified labial glands, so which secrete saliva. And usually in a typical insect, in a generalized insect like cockroach or grasshopper, so usually the saliva is mixed with the food and it will be useful in lubricating the mouth parts. Okay, so whereas in case of bees, saliva also performs the additional function of softening the wax. So that means, as I was telling, the function performed by these specific glands varies from insect to insect. So similarly, in case of silkworm larvae, the salivary glands are so big, they are extended to, you can see the posterior part of the body, so they are so long and they in fact produce the cocoon. So that means these salivary glands are modified as thin glands. So that cocoon has got you no know, value in textile industry. The third type of gland are epignatorial gland or stink gland or scent glands. Okay, so you know, various type of hemipteran bugs. Okay, so when they are handled, you know, they release the, the defensive chemical which has got very nauseous smell, okay, very bad smell, which has got repellent properties. So of course, when a natural enemy or a predator or parasite attacks, so they release this type of you know, uh, exocrine substance which will be released to the outside of the body and has got you know, repellent properties. So, so not only the emitrum works but also some of the other insect groups like papillonid larvae which secretes this defensive chemical through the asmatidia, so arm-like structure found in case of properties. So that means you know, now the function in fact you know, may be same but their position, location varies from species to species. The fourth type of glands are pheromone glands. So usually they are found in the abdomen, which, has, which attracts the opposite sex. So that means if the male produces the pheromone, female get attracted. If the female produces, male get attracted. Okay. So as they leave outside, so pheromone plays a very important role in order to bring the opposite sexes together. They mate and reproduce. Then wax glands. Okay. So wax glands, of course, secrete wax. Very important in case of honeybees. So which are found in the fourth to seventh abdominal sternum, that means in the ventral side, which will be useful for construction of the eye. Whereas in case of you no know, aphids, so the wax is secreted by carnicals or cyclinculi, which are found in the fifth or sixth abdominal segment. Whereas in case of 
no white flies where the 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 wax producing glands are found in various parts of the body so they are in fact called the wax pores and wax pits which you know you know the secretion will cover the body and it has got defensive function of course okay so those are wax glands and their location varies from species to species again then poison gland or sting gland okay so we know that in case of honey bees the oil poison is modified as sting so similarly the accessory glands okay accessory glands of female so these worker bees are females but they are sterile but these accessory glands are modified as poison glands so they secrete that defensive fluid and that will be you no know, directly injected into the victim's body through the oil positor which is modified as sting so that means accessory glands are modified as poison gland in case of worker bees so these are the few of the exocrine glands so in addition to that there are number of endocrine glands which are very much important for normal growth and development of insects okay so few of these endocrine glands are neurosecretory cells carporo cardiaca carporo alata and prothoracic glands so these four are very much important for growth and development that means they perform very important function during the molting process okay so neurosecretory cells are those cells which are found within the brain okay so the secretions of these neuro neurosecretory cells are collectively called brain brain hormone okay so this brain hormone in turn activates the carporo cardiaca so this car carporo cardiaca are paired glands found just behind the brain okay which in, in turn secretes the this carporo cardiaca secretes the prothoracic tropic hormone in short it is called pttth okay so this pttth in turn stimulates prothoracic gland okay so this prothoracic gland no no pttth in fact stimulates this prothoracic gland which are found in the prothoracic region and there again okay paired structures and they release the ectoderm okay so ectoderm is nothing but the, the molting hormone which is secreted by the prothoracic glands in addition to the carporo cardiaca and prothoracic glands the other important paired glands present just behind the carporo cardiaca which are in fact attached to carporo cardiaca are carporo alata which produces juvenile hormone so this juvenile hormone regulates morphogenesis and promotes metamorphosis so the main function of juvenile hormone is to maintain the youngness or juvenility so that's because of this juvenile hormone secreted by the carporo alata so that means so there are number of endocrine glands as a whole they perform the function of you no know, involving the, the process of molting so let us uh, look at in detail about the process of molting and see how these different glands you now helpful in you no know, molting process so important hormones which we studied are brain hormone secreted by the neurosecretory cells in fact it triggers the carporo cardiaca to release prothoracic tropic hormone so this pttth is released by the carporo cardiaca which stimulates the prothoracic glands to release molting hormone or ectoderm which is also called 20 hydroxy ectoderm okay so this is you know, mh is released by the prothoracic glands in turn it stimulates the stimulates molting by stimulating epidermal cells to divide mitotically so that means this is the the important hormone which stimulates the molting process this is the starting point of you know, molting process in fact so juvenile hormone secreted by the carporo alata promotes normal development and vesican hormone at last once the you know, molting process is completed which is released by the neurosecretory cells stimulate sclerotization of the cuticle so hardening occurs once the molting completes say for example how actually these you no know, different endocrine glands secretes the different substances depending on the insect requirement they assume that a larva is there which is ready for molting so We assume that it is in the third instar. Okay, so during that third instar stage, during the from initial stage of third instar to almost what is the end of the, the that particular third instar, the concentration of juvenile hormone is very high. Okay, so when the insect no 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 gets the stimulus in order to mold, in order to grow further, so what happens? This neurosecretory cells present in the brain releases brain hormone. Okay, once the brain hormone is released. which in turn triggers the carporo cardiaca to release prothoracic tropic hormone okay so this prothoracic tropic hormone in turn no no triggers prothoracic glands to release molting hormone so once the molting hormone is released insect actually starts molting okay so once it molts okay molting occurs so once it molt molting occurs the insect is no reaches to the tunnel condition that means the exoskeleton which is deposited outside the body will be paler in color so that condition is called you no know, tunnel condition 
So what happens immediately? The neurosecretory cells, in fact, start secreting vasican hormone. So this vasican hormone, in fact, okay, is helpful for sclerotization and organ. So assume that the larva is there, which will actually start removing the, the exoskeleton, and it removes the exoskeleton, and all that happens because of the no no the hormonal secretion of different glands. Okay, so as a whole, in fact, brain have a control over all these glands by secreting the brain hormone. So once it releases the new newly deposited exoskeleton will be pale in color. So that is general condition. And after some time, okay, so darkening or no hardening occurs. So it is well exemplified in case of cockroach. You can see here. So it is a no insta, for example, a nymphal insta. Once it molds, you can see it is it turns white. Okay, it's pale in color. So whatever the exoskeleton is deposited is pale in color. But once it molds, once it removes the old exoskeleton. Okay, so it start you no know, hardening and you no know, sclerotization starts happening. Okay, so as a result of that, you know, after I say one hour or two hour or five hour, depending on the species, they turns dark brown color. So all that is actually you no know, managed by the various endocrine glands present in the insect. So in addition to those four glands, another important gland found in few of the insect groups called maggots of Cyclorhaph and Diptera are waste man's ring. Okay, so here Carporocardiaca. Carpora aliata and prothoracic glands are fused together to form a ring like substance, ring like structure. So, this is a carpora aliata, prothoracic glands, and carpora cardiaca. All of them are fused to form a ring like structure, which is called this man's ring. Okay, it secretes puparium hardening hormone. So, we, we know that puparium is found in case of Victron no, maggots, which uses the last larval exuvia in order to cover the, the pupa. So, which occurs in case of maggots of Cyclorapha diptera. So, puparium hardening hormone is secreted by this waste man's ring. Okay, so now in chart, in fact, we studied the exocrine glands, which included mandibular glands, salivary glands, silk glands, epigmatorial glands, pheromonal glands, wax glands, and poison glands. So, important endocrine glands which we studied are neurosecretory cells, carporocardiaca, carporalata. Prothoracic glands and these man's rings. Okay, these are the two endocrine glands which we studied. So, thank you. If you can any specific questions, you can mail me as well as or you can post below. Thank you. Thank you very much.